Hey guys, hey! Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be covering how I am preparing for labor and in all the aspects. Spiritually, mentally, physically, you name it. Now, total disclaimer, I am no professional at all. I am literally just sharing what I am doing with you guys to maybe inspire or give you some ideas. Um, but definitely, definitely consult your doctor, provider, whoever's taking care of you in your pregnancy if you want to try anything that I am doing, whether it be exercises, physical things, um, or supplements and stuff. Just make sure that you are listening to your body and listening to professionals in your life because they know your situation better than me. Um, so without further ado, let's just get straight into it. daily practice of positive affirmations. Whenever I start to feel fearful, fe <laughs> I can't even talk. Whenever I start to feel fearful, oh, that is a tongue twister. Um, about giving birth, I just counteract those thoughts with positive affirmations. Um, some I have written down right here. My body is doing everything it needs to to bring my child into this world. I can carry, birth, nurture, and mother my baby. Also practicing hypnobirthing to an extent. Um, a lot of people, like professionals, will offer hypnobirthing classes and stuff, but I just didn't feel like it was worth investing in right now because, you know, finances are tight, everything going on in the world, it just wasn't best for me. So what I did was I downloaded an app that um, someone had recommended, and I will link it in the description box below. I think it's called hypnobirthing, honestly. I'm not even sure it has an intricate name, but I will... Um, link it below it has a pink icon with like a silhouette of a mom and a baby and i pretty much just listen to it every night before bed i uh put my headphones in and i fall asleep to it and it's just kind of now i am no professional like i said i don't really even fully understand what hypnobirthing is to me it just seems as though it's positive affirmations regarding birth and pregnancy and motherhood and um it kind of trains your subconscious mind to naturally think positive thoughts about the whole birthing and pregnancy experience and motherhood. So I fall asleep to those every night. Um, I think that that's helping a lot because the, the mind is so powerful. Now physically, I am going to show you guys some clips of some exercises and stretches that I do. But I am trying to prepare physically as much as possible because just the thought of that pain is crazy. And I want to do anything I can to help minimize the amount of pain, tearing, whatever it is. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least, I mean, like, what do I really have to lose? Might as well try, right? So um, I've done a lot of research. Um, I have gotten my doctors okay on a bunch of these things. So I've been implementing some supplements um, and those include evening primrose oil supplements. They're like little, just little pills that are filled with the oil. And um, I just started taking them this week. I'm 35 weeks now. I do not recommend starting them any earlier because there is a chance of, you know, preterm, going into preterm labor with these supplements. So that's why I stress talking to your doctor, midwife, whoever it is that you're going to see because if not taken right or monitored right, these things can be dangerous. So please keep that in mind. Um, so evening primrose oil, I'm taking about one to two um, orally every day. And then a fellow YouTuber, Sarah Therese, I love her. She recommended putting them vaginally. I think she said pretty much every night. I haven't been doing that yet. I think I might start tonight. I'm a little scared, not going to lie. So I'm going to just like see how it goes and see how I like it. Um, and then red raspberry leaf tea. Dang, I meant to go grab, grab it from the kitchen. Well, I'll try and insert a picture right here of the one that I use. I use the Earth Mama brand. Um, if not, it will definitely be linked below. 
And so red raspberry leaf tea pretty much um, helps soften your cervix and you need that like a soft cervix in order to go into labor and well not go into labor in order to deliver your baby successfully because it needs to dilate and thin out and move so anything that helps with that that's what I'm kind of focusing on right now and that's what the evening primrose oil does and that is also what the red, red raspberry leaf tea does so I'm starting to drink one cup of the tea a day and then I'm going to slowly like I think maybe within a few days bring it or next week probably when I'm 36 weeks I'll bring it up to two cups a day I have uh, also been trying I don't even know how I'm pronouncing this right but perineum perineum massages which at first like really really creeped me out I tried it a few times and I was like oh, no honey this is not for me <laughs> but um I've kind of warmed up to it a little bit and I'm not gonna I don't feel qualified or comfortable enough to really get into that but you can do your own uter uter <laughs> youtube or google searches on that and learn for yourself but I heard that that's a huge like help in preparing for labor and it usually decreases your likelihood of tearing down there so i've been using um the evening primrose oil i'll pop open the supplement and i'll use that with a little bit of coconut oil maybe some lavender oil um and i'll do that uh, i've been trying to take a bath at least once a week um to help hydrate again i've been drinking a lot of water now i don't remember the exact amount that they recommended one of my nurses told me this week we're supposed to be drinking four gallons of water and like i don't know that just sounds preposterous to me but usually on a regular day i drink about four three four bottles of water and um lately i've been drinking about six plus i'm so much more thirsty too i'm trying to like up my intake even more than that excuse me because it's so, just so important it's also really good for your skin and stuff too so that's a plus um i do stretches and yoga prenatal yoga um pretty much every day at least like one or two stretches at the very least because trust me there are days when i don't feel like doing it but i do a lot of like opening stretches to open up my pelvic floor to keep my pelvis open because at the end of the day that is what you want you want your pelvis to be open so that baby can come out come down and out you know um and if you're constantly like crossing your legs sitting with your legs crossed uh and like just not being mindful of staying open um it can be harder when it comes to labor and delivery at least from what i've heard so every time i sit down i make sure that my legs are pretty much like open and i'm doing a lot of stretches which i'll show you right here okay so this is one of the stretches that i do to open up my pelvic floor just take a deep breath in like slowly go down with your feet pretty a little bit further than shoulder length apart and use your elbows to push your legs you can kind of like move around with it sit there breathe okay that i a lot of stretches to keep my pelvic floor open and also kind of get those muscles ready for labor. Um, with that comes squatting. I've been doing, trying to do at least like 25 squats a day at the very least. But um, if it's a good day, I do more sets of that. And that really helps one, support your back and belly, your growing belly. It takes a lot of strain on your muscles and it's so easy to kind of just like lay around on the couch all day, but I like, you're not doing anything good for your muscles they're just getting weaker and weaker when you do that so it's important to kind of keep them strong and i think it also helps alleviate the pressure and the pain from your growing belly um what else so i was going to prenatal yoga classes once a week and then obviously with coronavirus those got canceled and that's really sad because i was loving them so much like it was so so necessary <laughs> and I would have been going to get um, prenatal massages and going to the chiropractor but all those things aren't really possible right now so I'm kind of just making do with what I can do at home I'm prepping my husband little by little I'm watching videos from like doulas and and midwives and professionals in and like learning what he can do now um, in this like last stretch of my pregnancy and also during labor 
to help alleviate my pain physically and also like you know mentally to kind of like keep me grounded but that he's just natural at that anyway but um we've been practicing some exercises and stuff that apparently really help when you're laboring i've been walking as much as possible um so like if i'm going to run to the store that's like right down the block i'll walk there instead of drive um me and my husband will take a little walk sometimes by the water um it's also been nice with like being inside the house a lot you know considering the times that we're in um going on a walk is just a nice obviously it's good for your body but it's a nice like mental like re helps like helps me recharge you know it's really nice and i think it keeps your body like moving and keeps the baby you know keeps gravity working on the baby to get the baby in a good a good position and hopefully baby will come in a timely manner i have been using this little ball that i have and it's just like a regular like little bouncy ball that i got from the store and i use this a lot to give myself like um focused massages and i put it pretty much between my back and the wall and i kind of just like slowly will so say this is the wall right and this is my back i'll i'll put it in like a certain area and i'll slowly just like put pressure on it using my body weight and it really really helps alleviate a lot of the ligament pain i have um in my uterus in my lower back my spine my upper back kind of like all those areas my booty like it really 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 helps and it's so easy to do so i've been doing that um i've been gathering all my postpartum must-haves um i will not get into that right now i'm gonna do a separate video because it's a lot of stuff that i am gathering i'll probably do like what's in my hospital bag or maybe i'll after i give birth i'll go over what i had in my postpartum kit and then what i actually used so stay tuned for that um obviously i've been educating myself on all the ins and outs that i can possibly think of a lot of it does get overwhelming and there's just a lot to consider but i've been trying to get really like more familiar with the terminology of labor and delivery um understanding pitocin induction um epi epidural pro epidural pros and cons uh preparing myself for like in the instance that i have to get an emergency c-section what actually okay, like guys, goes on so during that procedure just gives me some peace of mind um i've been trying to eat healthy um obviously it's really important when you're pregnant but I'm not gonna lie, there are days when I am just pigging out and like I just crave McDonald's and it's balance, honestly, because at least for me being pregnant, like when I when my heart is set on something, like I have to have it. And if I have something else, like I'm just I just can't stomach it. So sometimes it's okay to give in to your cravings and just treat yourself. Treat yourself, girl, okay? Don't be so hard on yourself, honestly. But try to fit in like fruits and veggies whenever you possibly can sleeping as much as possible because from the moment i found out i was pregnant <laughs> i literally mourned my sleep like oh, i love sleep so much and i know i'm not going to be able to sleep that much especially especially in the first three months so i have been sleeping a lot and not to mention like my body really needs it like 10 hours a night excuse me like 10 hours a night and sometimes i'll even throw a little nap in there during the day um i've been starting my birth plan actually i'm about to start it today i have my next appointment next week and that's kind of when we're going to go over my birth plan um i've been trying to mentally like create a list of things that bring me peace and calmness and joy so that i can make sure i have those things set up and with me uh, when I do go into labor for example essential oils really help me like good calming smells are so important to me so like lavender is a, a scent that I really like that really calms me down I also really like citrusy scents so I'm making sure I have those on hand with my diffuser I'm creating a playlist of songs that kind of just calm me down give me good vibes keep me in a good place bring me pleasure because at the end of the day pleasure uh, cancels out pain and that's what you really want to focus on at least that's what I've been what I've learned um, so I'm trying to gather as many things that bring me pleasure as possible um, 
been also printing out some of the affirmations that I've been saying. I'm going to print out a bunch of those and put them around um, the labor and delivery room because I think, like, I'm such a visual person. Like, seeing those things will really, really help me stay in that good headspace that I need to stay in. Um, obviously, been trying to practice like breathing techniques and like focusing on my breath a lot more. Um, Cause like, that's like the number one thing that they tell you to breathe, you know, <laughs> obviously, but it's super important when you're in labor. And then spiritually, I'm really just like praying so much. I'm praying for, you know, everything, like my health, my baby's health, my husband's health, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, like for us to come together and become a stronger unit. Um, I'm trying to cut all like old spiritual ties I may have with past trauma, um, childhood, my, like healing my inner child. I'm really just trying to clear out all of that baggage as much as I possibly can before the baby arrives because I just want to have a lot more space for love and patience, which aren't things that have always come natural to me. Um, and it's a work in progress. Um, you know, it's it's not something that can be done overnight. It's not something that even when it is, when you have accomplished it, that stays. Like it's something that you have to constantly, constantly work at. And with that being said, I have been going to therapy on a weekly basis. And that's just huge for me because I was diagnosed with antenatal depression. I have suffered for years from anxiety and depression. And when I first found out I was pregnant, I was so fearful of having postpartum depression. I've just heard so much about it and just the thought of experiencing that scared me so much especially being so far away from home and my loved ones um and like kind of like that comfort zone you know so like s having that professional support system there and all these resources that i'm aware of is so important in keeping my like peace of mind and knowing that i'm not alone and i do have people and resources there to help me through it all and that you know what I'm going through is normal and that I'm if I do happen to go through that I'm going to get through it and I just think that's so 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 important I really recommend that everyone finds a therapist whether you're depressed or you actually have any of these symptoms or disorders or not like we all can benefit from it honestly and like it's that's been such a huge part of my journey and preparing for motherhood um, I've been journaling a lot more. Journaling helps me a lot when I'm really frustrated or sad or upset, like, and my emotions are just so intense. It's just so nice to, like, let your pen hit the paper and let it all out. It's just beautiful. <laughs> and um, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video is not too long. Um, and hopefully you guys got some ideas and learned from this a little bit. Um, I will obviously give you guys a check-in after I had the baby and see and kind of like reflect on all these things and let you know how my experience was. Now, there's no way to really prove that all these things I'm doing are going to help me have a successful, simple, like least painful as possible um, delivery, but they definitely can't hurt, you know? So hoping for the best. And for all you expectant mamas out there, I pray that you also have a smooth pregnancy and delivery and that pregnancy and delivery <sighs> yeah because this is scary it's scary can't lie can't lie but it's fun it's beautiful it's like the most amazing scary thing i've ever done in my life and i'm excited and in the next one